Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am the Inconsequential Runner and we have with us Coach Mark. Hello Coach Mark. Hello Darcy. How you, How you go? Oh, I'm going great. Right? I'm going great. <laughs> now, those that are joining us, thank you for joining. Coach Mark and I are going to do something a little bit different for the next around about half an hour. So make yourself comfortable or if you're doing something around the house, take us with you because we're not going to do too many things visually. You can have us on in the background while you're doing other things. Coach Mark and I are just going to chat about some of the big things that have happened over the last week in running. What else could entice you? What I'm going to talk about is we've got European Athletics Championships that have just finished. There's a couple of highlights in there um, that I'm going to share. And Coach Mark, I'd, yeah, we'll just chat and get your views on a couple of things but there are a couple of standout things for me i want to chat about mm -hmm. i want to also cover the sock shoe debate do you go mm -hmm. sock sock shoe shoe or sock shoe sock shoe i've got an answer on that and that'll be a starter for 10 and we'll debate that and we will answer that age old question for all time right here right now okay. today hang around for that and also um the meta speed paris um, from Essex, I've got the edge pair. So there's the edge in the sky. I've got the edge. So I'm going to give a quick, quick, quick overview from the training run. Coach Mark, you got me to do yesterday. I'll talk about these. I'm going to share something that no other um, shoe tuber has talked about because I, I think I've discovered something about the shoe that explains it quite well. And the reason why people are saying don't wear it for the marathon, only up to half marathon. I think I've worked out why they're saying that. Coach Mark, what sort of things do you want to cover off today, champ? Oh, yeah, I thought of pretty pretty light-hearted uh, topics, actually. Um, yeah, we, were, we often talk, talk about how to make sure that everything goes right. Um, you know, you, you put yourself in the best position to perform at your best in a race and that everything goes to plan. Nice. But, um, you know, when you've been running as long as I have, you, you get the odd thing when, despite all the best intentions, nothing goes right. Yeah, absolutely nothing. <laughs> and you just consign it to the dustbin. But um, it, 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 it's one of those things that's it's humorous looking back on. Not so humorous at the time. No. But I'll share. I'll share one of one of mine. I've had a few actually, but I'll share one of mine. Oh, uh, if you've got a story a coming, we want to hear stories. <laughs> all right. And also, this is this is something. I mean, we all. Uh, which is great when people people cheer you on on the side, you know, when you're in a race. But you know, and that's something oh, maybe what, you might what, have a few examples of. Well, what people say comments from the sidelines from spectators, and you know, you think, oh, what? Love it, love it. I did see a sign the other day, and it was at an Ironman, and someone had said, "If you're still married, you haven't trained hard enough," and that ah. was is. The, which I love, especially for Ironman, you know, some of those Yeah, things. yeah, I love it, yeah. Okay, Coach Mark, where do you want to start? How to make everything go right in the race, comments on the sidelines, socks and shoes, European athletics, or the meta speeds? Where do you want to start, do you think? Oh, you start with the, the European ones, actually. Yeah, it's a good Let's place to start. So, so, yes. serious, yeah. mm -hmm. So the European athletic champs, so track and field, yeah have just happened the last six days, we've been afforded them. Now, anyone who's watching this and you want to see what's gone on, there's a great package. I can't remember, I'll put it in the show notes. So under, in the drop down box under this video, um, where you'll see Coach Mark's details, I'll also put um, the best video, yeah, the best YouTube channel to go and see 20 minute highlights of each of the six days. But um, Coach Mark, what stood out for me was the 1,500 men's, there's a number of things, like mm. Fenta Bowl, unbelievable. She's looking so good. Actually, I'm going to jump around. Let's start with Fenta Bowl. Her cadence yeah. is considerably less than the other runners, and she's running fast, and she doesn't look like she's trying. And when she no. flips her lap in, you know, 50-something seconds, it's like, yeah, how, she, oh, wow, she's just hitting. Really is amazing, eh? You is think, the, how is she running so much quicker? She just doesn't look it, does she? Yeah. Well, yeah. And, well, I mean, Coach Mark, what's, is that just, is that just a talent thing? Can some people, I mean, we can practice and you've talked to us before about, you know, cadence and how to improve it and stuff like that. That's in our back catalogue of, of videos to help others. 
But is there a, a, a level where there's just pure talent where it just can't be coached or can't be trained because anatomically they're just built in such a way or, or something? Yeah, she's obviously just genetically very fortunate. Um, yeah, to 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 be able to do to be able to do that. I mean, she no doubt works on it very hard in training, but so yeah. does everyone. You know, yeah. I can't imagine she's doing anything um, particularly unusual in training that her opposition aren't doing. No, um, there, but um, yeah. And and it's it's um, spring, isn't it? Spring in the ankles because she's. She, I'd love to know what her stride length is, but she doesn't. She it, it's all it's all done. You know, she she's hardly putting in any effort at all in the upper body, is she? Her, her arm wow. her arm swing's quite low actually compared to the others. You know, who really yeah. have their, their hands up here, and she hers is hers is um, uh, hardly going above her midriff. Really is quite amazing, and she could, and her change of pace. You see it uh, in the relays. Did you see her in the relays? You know, she was yeah. she was sort of um, come along and then then just change gear. You know, imperceptibly actually. That's the key yeah. word, yeah, because you can't see it, but you know it's happening yeah. because everyone else is keeping the same sort of pace, but they're falling way behind. And I think yeah. it's with Inga Britson too. You know, it's imperceptible. Yeah. In terms of when he puts the screws on, but you know he's put the screws on because he's got five people on his heels and then they all disappear. So you know if a couple yeah. of people are dropping, they will drop and there'll be some remainders. But when you see the whole five behind him drop away, it's it's yeah, I know. Unbelievable. Do you know I, I I heard he ran the last two hundred and I think twenty six yeah. five or something, but then he ran the last um the last hundred and twelve six. So he so he was just accelerating the whole time, just... and everyone else was flat to the boards, weren't they? And they they're all in a line in a big bunch, you know. It could have, you know, the medals could go anywhere, second, brots, you know, silver, bronze, etc. But um, he was just out on his own. He quite he amazing. Was out on his own, and and spoiler alert for those that haven't seen it, and if you haven't seen it, it's it's on you. You should mm. get up in the morning and watch it. So. I'm gonna we're gonna spoil some of the results here, but you know, here we go. What amazed me is in the, the what was effectively the semi that that heat yeah. and the final, he was literally the last person after 200 meters, way off the back yeah. in one of them. Yeah. And he just sat there until he was ready mid-race, he would just come to the front. And I thought, this is either this is just arrogance or he just knows who he is or he's just taking things. But there was just this massive chasm between his yeah. power and his reserve that he could tap into and where all the other world-class runners were. It was unbelievable. When he turned that switch, he was untouchable. There was that magic feeling that he he knew, however the race was run, uh, run he was yeah. going to be better than everyone else. Yeah. So if 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 he needed to take it out from the front, he could have won that way. He yeah. was happy waiting. I mean, with that speed at the end, you know, he, he was he was capable of out sprinting, which he did. Yeah. He was capable of going. You know, he took the lead, didn't he? After I think he finally sort of went through to the front with a couple of laps to go, didn't he? Yeah, about yeah, about the midway point. Up. Then he, yeah, and I I think it was in the the semi or the heat before the final when they ran um the three heats. Um, mm. There was a fall. Did you see the fall in it? And about five guys yeah. came down. Yeah. Question for you. I didn't see the final results. One guy fell in field and he got up and he resumed. Would he, would have he got DQ'd? I, I haven't seen that result, but would he get disqualified? Yeah. No, or no, he wouldn't have. Another way yeah. on that. No, yeah, you, you only, you only get, get DQ'd in that if, if you were then uh, seen to have had an advantage. Oh, gotcha. So you ran on the infield and kind of got gotcha. like, But if you oh, fall on good. the infield, you're plainly no advantage, um, oh, so you're, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. you can get back in. Yeah, yeah. but oh, that good. I mean, uh, pretty tough, pretty tough there. And I mean, that, that that's I guess one of the reasons why he hung off at the back as well. You know, yeah, he he any right carnage there. He went literally from last to first, so he he was never in the middle of the pack, was he? No, never. he's just so so confident at, at that level, um, and that was what uh, he did. What's called a triple double. <laughs> So that's the third time he's won both the 5K and the 1500. Right. He ran. He won his first one when he was 17. 
Seventini won the um, uh, 1505k double. So look, it is the European champ. So there's people from Africa, obviously not there, but the big names in the 1500 recently are the likes of Josh Kerr and Jack uh, Whiteman. Where were they? I, I don't know. Do you happen to know where they were? Well, why weren't they? Yeah, there? yeah. Well, see, it, it, it's 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 weird that the, the European champs have never in the past been on. They might, I don't know if they were last time. They, they were never on in an Olympic year. They, they were always on in a non-Olympic year. What, what it used to be actually that the Olympic the Olympics were on um, every four years. The Europeans were on every four years, and they were, you yeah, know, two years sort of off. Two years later, yeah, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But but now now because I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, I think now the Europeans are every second year, the World Champs are every second year, and it's a, oh, and all the Diamond you. Leagues. There's just so many races. Got but you see, for the Brits. See, um, Ingebrigtsen, he he's obviously he he's representing Norway, isn't he? In the <laughs> in the Olympics, he doesn't have to worry about getting selected. No. But the Britain, you see, that in a week, it might only be a week from now. Um, they have their trials for the Olympic okay. Games, so the peaking just you know, for the and, trials. and um, yeah. so and and that's going to be huge because you've three three go, of course. Yeah. Uh, Kerr's been pre-selected. So I don't think he's even running the trial. So he's just basically aimed a peak for the Olympics, which let's face it is three races um, at the Olympics. And you're not guaranteed to get through the heats. You pretty much will, but I mean, it's not a guarantee. The three increasingly hard races you've got a peak for there. So if you're doing the trial, so you've got uh, Jake Whiteman and you've got Neil Gurley and you've got George Mills and you've got yeah. that guy, Adam Fogg, and you've got, Elliot Giles and whoever, they're all fighting. So the first two in the trial are going to go. That, that, that's what they basically said. So that, this is cutthroat. I mean, so Jake Whiteman, he's basically got a, he would, if he ran the Europeans, he would have had to peak for the Europeans, keep that peak for the, um, the trials, keep that peak again for the Olympics. And yep. that's just not, it's oh, not really no. feasible. Okay. That so that's cool. why he wasn't there. there. Yeah. He did a low key race in New York, which he won actually against um, you know top American opposition. So he's getting he's getting in good shape, you know, in his own time. It's yep. just unfortunate. I think he, I mean they would have been there. I think if it was a you know a non Olympic year, but it's just that's the big prize. Um, so that, and, and for Inga Britson, he, he in a way, I mean, he they were like training runs for him, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, the golf was. Yeah. That he could have he could have run those races. Out with his brothers, or just running yep. by himself at the track. Yeah, yeah, made a no difference. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's it's yeah, that's awesome. The highlights are on YouTube. Track them down. As I say, I'll put a link in the um sh in the show notes for what I think is the best site to go and see to go and see it. Just a quick thing, actually, about those euros. It wasn't it great to see actual races and not paste paste things. You know, it it just adds such a more of an element to it. I I really enjoyed the ten k, for example, where it was really slow to start with, and you had you had people who who really did want a fast pace, and you could almost see their brains ticking over, going, "I'm going to have to take this out." Yep. You know, and the British guy did actually; he was quite brave and did that diva. Um, and then you had the guys who were the kickers sitting in there, going, "Oh, this yeah. is great," you know. Yeah. But then everyone, they always say, everyone. Everyone who's a kicker thinks they're the best kicker, <laughs> and it's not necessarily the case. So yeah, so they so it really threw up a fantastic race. Yeah, yeah which 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 is what is great about our championships. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Com let's go to comments. I love a bit of comedy. I, I think this is going to make me laugh. All right, comments from the side of the road. What sort of? Oh. There, there are some signs to see that pop up on, you know, Facebook or, or whatever, some hilarious stuff. And of course, with one doing the circuit, this isn't so funny. But with the last 5K to go, now people are just holding up signs going, one park run to go for those that yeah. are enough to do marathons. Not my world. Yeah. 5K and 10K, not marathons. Yeah. So can I just say to people that are new to running, you don't have to run marathons. Everyone's talking no. about marathons at the moment, and 95% of YouTube reviews of shoes are all 
would it help you with your marathon training? I'm like, that's not the only race. And no, I know. How long? I know. And they take a lot of training. So if you want to run fast, maybe oh, I'm just putting it out there. Look at a shorter distance, like a 5K or a 10K. You know, that can you can turn yourself inside out. I've run a lot of 5K races where I've spent the rest of the day recovering. And that meant lying on the couch, eating donuts, watching TV. You can exhaust yourself in 5K. In fact, 5K can be quite painful. So just putting it out there to anyone new to running, don't feel like you have to run marathons. You don't. That's not the the, the summit of running is wherever you want to put it. Anyway, Coach Mark, I've gone on a rant. Back to you. Okay, um, comments, side of the road stuff. What have you heard? Well, I mean, a classic, a classic one. I mean, and, and look, anyone who's cheering on, it's great. I mean, don't, don't not cheer people on. But uh, it's, cool. I Very mean, cool. one of the classic ones, which is a, which is a throwaway comment, is keep going. You know, how often do you hear that? And you go, hey, I never thought of that. <laughs> I used to do BMX racing and we would hear all the time, um, you know, people shouting from the sideline. <laughs> That's the most fundamental thing. We've got that. You can see everyone's yeah. peddling. What else? Give us something else, like next level. Yeah, that's just... That's oh, I like wonder, one guy yelled at me, keep your feet off the ground as I ran past. <laughs> I still haven't worked out what he meant by that one. Oh, that's hilarious. Have we ever had an incident of runner versus um, spectator where like the spectator yelled something and the runner was like, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to slap you around the top. It stops. I can imagine someone being angry enough and being tired enough and they didn't take the gel that they should have taken 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And they're in a real vulnerable place and someone says something to them. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hey, I, to, talking of that, Jales, I, I, um, a guy told me a very funny one. He was in a uh, big city marathon. He was yep. he had hit the wall, so he was in a bad yep. state. Uh, wasn't, so it wasn't too far from the phone. It's somewhere in that last 10K, I imagine. Anyway, he was running very low on fuel, and he saw this guy standing on the side with a big tray, a tray full of gel, just gel on the tray. Yep. I mean, why would a guy be standing there with a big tray full of gel? It's not, but in this kind of like hazy mind, he went, oh, gee, that's just what I need. So he, he got his hand. As he ran past, he, he, he scooped up like big thing of gel off the tray and oh, stuck no. it in his mouth for that. No. Do you know what it was? It was Vaseline. I know. Like Vaseline for chafing. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. And I'll tell you, he he forgot his um, he forgot his tiredness for a while. Anyway, oh. <laughs> okay. There's we need but, uh, to. Yeah. This can be another subject matter where we're talking about you know things that go wrong where we thought of one substance as another. I almost I left a um hot uh a tube of um like you know, one of those hot rubs. I can't remember the name of this oh, one, yeah. but it's like your deep heat sort of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. left the tube in the, the bathroom on the vanity and I thought, oh, bugger, I can't be bothered. This is a night later. I can't be bothered turning the light on. I almost loaded my toothbrush with oh. paper up as opposed to the toothpaste. <laughs> and it didn't happen. But like last second I clicked and I was like, right, lesson learned. Don't leave it next to the toothpaste. Turn on the light when you're cleaning your teeth. Because it was just late at night. I don't want to turn the light off. Anyway, anyway, I know people are going to be judging. Mean breath, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There must be. Oh, goodness. I'm not going to edit this out. I'm just going to have the courage to say it. But there have been times where I've put hot rub. This is in other sports. Um, on, on my legs to just help oh. them out. You go to the bathroom, stop. Your underwear soaks up the residue of your legs. You yeah, put it back up, and boy, are you ready? I can hear the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I was a young pup. That was a young pup mistake. So. Yeah, I, I know someone. They um, after a, a, a long race, I think it was a half marathon, and they got that. It was sort of you know alcohol based. Um, you know, roll on deodorant and they're sticking it in their armpits yeah. like that, and they've chafed all in there. Yeah. I can still remember the screams there yeah. from that. Dang. You live and learn, don't you? 
You hey, another another comment is um yeah you know, you, 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 how often you say you're not not far to go and you know someone yells out and that could mean anything can't it not far to go yeah <laughs> or it's all downhill from here and then you go around the corner and there's a slight incline and you're like you lied to me everything just gets yeah exaggerated hey what I will say anyone who's looking to run 5k and 10k you don't have to worry about chafing you don't have to worry about people shouting stuff at you you don't have to worry about exhaustion too much you no. will get finish feeling pretty good you will all you have to do is worry about speed so yeah that that takes care of all of that which is another reason why I'll never do oh I say I'll never do ultra an ultra and coach Mark, you did one recently and we've got the video on that the only reason why I do an ultra is that's the only race that gives you food. It has like those food stains. Yes, I love does. the idea yeah. of that. That's the only yeah. draw for me. Actually, I'm going to enter one and I'll DNF at the first station, but I'll just <laughs> eat as much there. as I can. Yeah, don't think it hasn't <laughs> happened before. When I used to give blood, they used to give me like a trespass notice because I ate too many biscuits afterwards. They were like, don't come back. Your blood's not worth it, mate. Stop eating the biscuits. So... It's happened. You, it happened. you could really blast it to the first aid station, get there ahead of everyone. You know. Their first. I was like, this guy is smoking. He's running four and a half minute Ks up in Clyde. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where's the food? The people coming, the coming later on. Where's the food? Oh, this guy's still here. You know, the guy with the napkin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Okay, well, let's talk about that then. Let's talk about... When everything goes right in a race, let's 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 come to that point. What were you going to um, share with us there, Coach Mark? Oh no, this is when everything goes wrong. Oh, when <laughs> everything goes wrong, that's even better. What did I write? Yeah, this, right. this is like oh, when everything well, goes wrong. Well, it's not wrong. even a cautionary tale. Oh, right. Over to you, I've, share I've had a few. I, I had one actually. I, I a cross country race. Um, I just felt like I was. I I, I just couldn't run. I forgot how to run. Um, I finished the race, took my spikes off, and I had my orthotics in the wrong shoes. Remember that one? Oh, my goodness. Whereupon I chucked them into the bushes, I remember. <laughs> so that was a shocker. But I probably my worst one is when I didn't, I, I, um, it didn't even involve running the race. That was, it was so bad. It was, it was a, um, it was when I was living in London, and there was on a Sunday there was a big race on either to South London, and there was, this race was on way up North London. I was in the shape of my life. I I'd run PBs over some other distance, and this was a race I'd really aimed for. And I thought I'm going to absolutely smoke this. I'd had a great week leading up to it. I was feeling good. It was on a Sunday. Have you have you ever you, you've been in London? Have you have you have you um Trying to travel, um, yeah, oh, okay. So, so trying to travel on the trains and tubes and everything on a Sunday is an absolute nightmare because they they do repairs on tracks and all this. Oh, sort of okay, stuff. okay, okay. Well, I so I set really off. I thought I had plenty of gear. Feeling. Yeah, where you can't depend on the trains in the weekend. Yeah, yeah. I was so I was going by public transport so i think it involved a, a no. few tube stops and a train um etc so everything that could go wrong went wrong the first tube broke down um had to change onto another line and then that went and that sort of broke down this line was wasn't working etc i got on the train the train broke down <laughs> i was looking at my watch the whole time going oh, this is starting to get a little bit close. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, now, it got to the point on the train, the, the, the train coming in, I, I was looking at my watch and I thought, gee, this really is quite tight. So what I, I did, I I thought, well, I'll, I'll better change into my racing gear. So I, oh, I changed into my racing on. shoes. I had my singlet on and shorts. I was uh, warming up on the train. There were all passengers on a Sunday morning reading their paper and they looking at this guy. <laughs> Doing limbering exercises, and some 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 drills and stuff on the train, and and I I worked out um, I thought when the train came in, I, I thought it was I think the start was about five minutes away, yeah. but I knew that the start line was about a kilometer away, yeah. So I thought, okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to be kind of running a kind of a one k tempo, 
yeah. just dump my bag and it's straight yeah. into the race. But that can still be done. You know, it's still possible. I'm in good shape. So the train came in, the doors opened, and I was off. Hey, I was like, I sprinted out there with a backpack on my back, got to the like T junction at the bottom. And I, I realized I didn't know which direction the, the race was. Was it left or right? I didn't know. So I ran off right, but it was left. Oh, no. <laughs> and in the distance, I knew it was forlorn anyway. I was like, and then I heard in the distance a, a gun crack. You know, and I just hit in my hands. Now, this must we're, have been the time we're... before they had chips that they gave it. Everyone, where you, you this don't, was the year, you nah, like years before that because this was in about 1992. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> the one thing nah, you can be no, afforded no, no, now, is yeah, if that would have up solved that with it. With the yeah. chips, you can, you can turn up late with the chip and you can cross the line and you'll get your net time. You're not running yeah. with the group, but at least now with the current, yeah, you, you get that because I've done that once. I turned up. I you know what I did? I, I, I made my way to the, the nearest pub, made my way to the nearest pub and had a full English breakfast. <laughs> full English after, breakfast and about three pints. <laughs> after the race, yeah. <laughs> and that was my race. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But sort of thing you'd think, well, at least this will make a good story in 30 years' time. It's a know? great <laughs> story. It's a great story. Thanks for sharing. All right, it's about you had anything yourself happen to you like that or? Oh, no, I, I, yeah, normal sort of stuff. Like sometimes I'm yeah. running late, and yeah. then, and especially for something like a park run or whatever, don't worry. If yeah. you run your park run in 30 minutes and you're 10 minutes late, still do it because you'll get back before the walkers. You won't hold anyone up. Yeah, if, you're watching, yeah. if you're running late for park run, just still go, still do it. Yeah. As long as you're not holding the timekeepers up, you'll be golden. Do that. Um, but yeah, you always do that renegotiation of your warm up, your 20, your 30 minute warm up. You go like, oh, I'm only going to have 20 minutes now. What do I need to do? Okay, 10 minutes now. What am I going to do? And of course, your warm up became the okay. It's going to be a 1k interval. That's it. Let's go. And yeah, that happens. But what I would say is, um, sometimes I've had the worst pre race experience in terms of I was running late. Everything was just going wrong. Da da da. But sometimes I've had a really great run on the back of that. So your pre-race sometimes doesn't predetermine how your race is no. going to unfold. So still yeah. run, and sometimes it's kind of freaky, but you can have the worst pre-race, but a really good run that just yeah. happened. So, yeah, don't don't write off any run. But, yeah, I think we've all had those. Um, yeah, one or two of those. I'm not going to talk to mine because I am notorious for showing up late to two races. <laughs> So, so <laughs> people know that not not all of them, but you know, just mm. the ones that anyway. Anyway, let's sock sock shoe shoe. I'm gonna let me put this out there. When people say, "What do you do? Do you go sock shoe sock shoe or sock sock shoe shoe?" I'm gonna advocate you go sock shoe sock shoe, and I'll tell you why. Because when you've got your sock on, the wallet's on, and you haven't got your shoe on, you're risking contaminating yeah. the sock. Like you might yep. just stand on the ground or or you're resting your heel on the ground while you're putting your other sock yep. on or something like that. And you're risking picking up something on the sock. Or you've got your foot yep. in the air and you've got your sock on, go straight to your shoe. Make sure, yep. to me, it's unequivocal. What I sometimes have on the boot of my car, I take this little hand towel, you know, just the old, old, the old one around your house that no one uses anymore. It's a bit, yeah. a bit wrapped. And I throw that over the edge of the boot, you know, over the bumper. So I can put my foot on that if I need to. Sock, then shoe. So you can put your foot on the car. You know, you're not trying to balance or whatever. But for me, sock, then shoe on straight after, then sock and shoe on the other. And it's a good way if you've got tracksuit pants on and you take one leg off, go sock, shoe. And then as you take the other shoe off, take your tracksuit pants off, sock shoe again. Kind of makes sense. Coach Mark, what do you think? Well, no, that, that, that's, that, I, I totally agree. That's what I what I do as well. Yeah, the only time I would do sock, sock, shoe, shoe is if I'm running from home and I and my shoes are like right outside the door, you know, so I don't have to step outside of my socks. Yeah, yeah, good call. Uh, so, so I've already got my socks on. Uh, or 
or all my socks are just already on because of you know may have driven somewhere and I'm putting on specific shoes yeah for, for the thing yeah but but otherwise yeah it makes total sense yeah I, often like yeah you I'd be outside so yeah you put on one sock and then that shoe and then you're balancing aren't you you that clean sock and shoe clean yeah. sock put yeah. on the other one yeah sock shoe sock shoe yeah we need a we should get something printed up t-shirt Sock shoe, sock shoe. So, yeah, anyone watching this, you decide what camp you're in, but we're telling you, sock shoe, sock shoe, that's the winner. I mean, it might not make sense. You might be used to sock, sock, shoe, shoe, but that's a conventional wisdom, and that's more about convention than it is about wisdom. We've given you the answer. There we go. All right, what else have we got? Here we go. Oh, last thing. Let me just share this. I've got a review coming up on these. Now, mm. so these are the Metaspeed Edge. Um, now, people are going to ask straight away, why did you get the Edge, not the Sky? Easy. I got the Edge because that was the only one that they had stock of. They didn't have the Sky. Mm -hmm. And I still couldn't differentiate whether I'd be suited for an Edge or a Sky. So it was like, I'll leave it in the hands of fate. Got the Edge. Now, mm -hmm. people have been telling me that this, I've only had one run on this, 10 case, and uh, some threshold-based stuff. Yep. Um, that you got me to do yesterday, Coach Mark. So some 30-second high speed, you know, mm -hmm. rolling it over. So some yep. elongated stride outs and some five-minute um, intervals at yeah. pace. What I can say is I understand why people are saying don't use these for the a marathon because they're probably a mm -hmm. little – for those that aren't, you know, really, 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 really good runners because your legs won't be used to them. I the saying that because they're quite firm, what I'll say is this, these things propel you along, but they drain your legs fast. So what they're doing, I feel like, is they're pulling more out of your legs. They're letting your legs do more work, but that means you're draining more. So I think yeah. that's another reason why people are saying this might be a bit harsh for the marathon, because unless you can run four hours solid, meaning mm -hmm. race for two and a half hours, which is where I'd sort yeah. of shoot, unless you can race a marathon two and a half hours to 240, maybe sub three, which means mm. you can run for five hours, then, I'll, yeah, I wouldn't use this for the marathon. But, 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 this yeah. only the for one shoe. But what I'll say is I got some good speed out of these shoes, but I could feel it was draining my legs. Worthwhile mm. for me for a 5K or a 10K. But, yeah, that's my initial impressions. Mm. That's it. interesting. But so yeah, yeah. So five or ten k be okay. But uh, yeah, trying to think how. So, yeah, because you wouldn't have even done five k in your um in your session, would you? Oh, you, I guess your yeah, your recoveries in that in between you would have. Yeah, your recovery. But yeah, pure speed yeah. time. You're right. It'll be three and a half. <laughs> yeah. Just under four k in just yeah. pure speed time. Four k. Yeah, yeah. Four k. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what was the what was um were the were the skies were they advertised as similar very similar were they? Yeah. So the the difference is, and I won't go into too much detail mm. because people can find it online. But these, yeah. so basically, they've said, look, if you've got a long stride and your cadence doesn't increase as you you speed up, your stride just gets longer. Mm. Go to the sky. But if you're more yeah. a cadence runner then go for the edge, meaning that your cadence speeds up and that's where you get your, disproportionately, you get more speed from increasing your cadence, even though your yeah. stride gets longer. If you're more cadence, this thing, if you're more just getting the length and you want the height and the bounce and still lumbering yeah. along at, you know, 160, you know, cadence, then sky is the thing for yeah. you. But with that said, I know, different runners have tried you know cadence runners have tried the sky and like that and tall you know six foot two lumbering 160 sort of steps per minute have tried the edge and like that so you know who knows who knows but yeah the edge seems to be working um for me it is a different feel so i'll get used to it i like it we'll see but full review later coach mark mm. We are almost there. We I'll call time on that. So what I'll say is yeah. for everyone who's joined us on the session, give us some feedback. Coach Mark and I just having a riff. Did it work? We covered a number of things. What goes wrong in a race? And we had a great story. Um, comments we've heard from the side. We've finally ended the sock, sock, shoe, shoe or sock, shoe, sock, shoe debate. 
We nailed that. We talked about the European Athletic Championships. Keep an eye out. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to see the 20 minute highlight, daily highlight packages of that. And we've talked about the new metas. And if you want to reach out to Coach Mark, his details also in the show notes. That's it. Nothing else from me. Coach Mark, anything from you, champ? Can't think of anything, actually. Can't think of anything. <laughs> That'll do it. I'll tell you what we're going to do. This will be an easy edit because we don't cut anything out. And those of you that are about to see our our video, I don't think I've released it yet on wearing undies or not wearing undies on the run. That's that's I'll release it after this. But this one we're recording. I'm going to have this live in the next half an hour. I'll chop the ends. The whole thing goes up live. So and Coach Mark, I'll send you a link so you can let your let your team know. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching to the end. Take care, everybody. Hit subscribe. Coach Mark, have a great weekend. Yeah, good to chat with you. Cheers.